What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fett, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. This week, we're going to be looking at the incredibly complex Dynamax mechanic introduced in Generation 8. Because of the sheer amount of different mechanics that Dynamaxing involves, I've left timestamps to each section of Dynamaxing mechanics in the description below if you just want to check out a specific interaction. Let's start off with the basics. Dynamaxing doubles a Pokémon's HP for three turns, gives it access to powered-up versions of its regular moveset, called Max Moves, and grants it a wide variety of immunities to different effects. Gigantamaxing is a similar mechanic. The only differences between Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing is that Gigantamax Pokémon get access to exclusive G-Max moves in place of their normal Max Move attack. They also get a new visual form, but that's all. When I talk about Dynamaxing in this video, know that all mechanics also apply to Gigantamax Pokémon, unless I specifically talk about Gigantamax mechanics. Dynamax Pokémon have a ton of immunities. To start off, you can't flinch a Dynamax Pokémon. It doesn't matter if it was Fake Out, Fling with King's Rock, or a regular percentage-based flinch from Rock Slide. None of them will cause a Dynamax Pokémon to flinch. Dynamax Pokémon are immune to attacks based on weight, like Low Kick, or Heavy Slam. They're immune to the effects of Destiny Bond, so Destiny Bond can't be used to KO a Dynamax target. Dynamax Pokémon are not immune to the effects of Grudge, however. Dynamax Pokémon are immune to the phasing effects of Roar, Whirlwind, Dragon Tail, and Circle Throw. Dragon Tail and Circle Throw still do their damage, but their secondary effects get blocked by the power of Dynamax. Interestingly enough, Red Card is also blocked by Dynamax by the same effect, and it even says the move was blocked by the power of Dynamax, despite Red Card being an item. On the other hand, items like Eject Button or Eject Pack, or abilities like Emergency Exit, will still trigger just fine while Dynamaxed, much to the amusement of current VGC North American International Champion Wolf Glick. Dynamax Pokémon also have an immunity to Oko moves, like Sheer Cold or Horn Drill. You can see it's an immunity because of the text that the Dynamax Pokémon was unaffected by the move. If it was just a regular miss, it would just say the move missed like normal. Dynamax Pokémon are also immune to Skill Swap and Entrainment. Ryunaragus's ability Wandering Spirit will also not activate while it is Dynamaxed. Other ability changing moves, like Simple Beam, work just fine, but none of Skill Swap Entrainment, nor Wandering Spirit, can give a new ability to a Dynamax Pokémon. Dynamax Pokémon are also immune to the effects of Encore, Instruct, and Torment. It's not as if just the Max moves are immune to these effects, like you couldn't just Encore a Max move, or you can't construct a Max move, or something like that. No, Dynamax itself grants an immunity to these effects. It doesn't grant a similar inherent immunity to Disable, however. For example, I can disable a Pokémon on the first turn of Dynamax to disable one of its base moves. Now, of course this won't actually do anything while the Pokémon is Dynamaxed, since they'd be using Max moves, not the base attack. However, once Dynamax wears off, you can see the move is still disabled from before, and cannot be used for that one turn. Importantly, Dynamax Pokémon are not immune to Knock Off, Bug Bite, or similar item based attacks. This is a rumor that is based on raid battle mechanics, which is completely unlike actual player versus player matches. In all wild Pokemon battles, including raid battles, the game doesn't let you lose your held items, so you can't just say, lose your lucky egg if the opponent happens to use knockoff on you. As you can see, in actual player versus player battles, you can use moves like knockoff and bug bite just fine on Dynamax targets, and you'll actually remove their item or eat their berry. Choice items are temporarily negated while a Pokémon is Dynamaxed. For example, if I hold a Choice Scarf and use Aerial Ice here with Dracozolt, you can see that I'm clearly faster than my ally Ninetales. However, if I Dynamax, 
I'm able to use whatever max move I want, and I will no longer be faster than my ally, because the Choice Scarf is temporarily negated while I am Dynamaxed. Importantly, if I'm still on the field after my three turns of Dynamaxing are up, and I was locked into an attack before I started my Dynamax, I'll still be locked into that same attack after my Dynamax is done. As you can see here, even though I wasn't locked into using Max Airstream based on Aerial Ace while Dynamaxed, I can't just choose another move to lock into now. However, if I Dynamaxed immediately with my choice Pokémon when I came onto the field, so I never locked into a move in the first place, after Dynamaxing is over, I'll be free to lock myself into an attack as if it were the first turn on the field. So as you can see here, I Dynamaxed with Dracozolt turn 1, and now after Dynamax is over, I'm able to choose a new move to lock myself into. Everything I've said with choice items applies to Darmanathan's Gorilla Tactics ability as well, which works basically just like Choice Ban. When multiple Pokémon Dynamax in a single turn, the Pokémon that Dynamaxes first is based on the speed stat with modifiers. To give a more straightforward example, my Snorlax here Dynamaxes after the opposing Corviknight, because Corviknight has much more speed than Snorlax. When Pokémon are much closer in speed, this can be really helpful for determining their speed stats without actually having to see each other attack head-on. Although Choice Scarf is negated for the purposes of calculating speed after Dynamaxing, on the initial Dynamax turn, Choice Scarf does get factored in for who Dynamaxes first. So for example, you can see here that my Draco Zolt with 93 speed and a Choice Scarf without Dynamax moves before the opponent's Chandelure just fine. For reference, my opponent's Chandelure has 111 speed. So, if both Pokémon Dynamax, my Dynamax will go off first. However, my Draco Zolt will now move after the opponent's Chandelure because it lost the Choice Scarf for the purposes of turn order. This lets my opponent know pretty much instantly that I was holding a Choice Scarf. Normally, a Dynamaxed Pokémon would only have 1.5 times its current HP after Dynamaxing. However, by feeding any Pokémon 10 Dynamax candies, you buff the HP boost to 2 times its current HP, which is strictly objectively better. All competitive teams in VGC should have 10 Dynamax candy used on every Pokémon as a result since you never know when you might need to Dynamax a Pokémon in a unique situation. Throughout this section, I'll be referring to base HP as the Pokémon's HP stat before Dynamaxing. If I use the term Dynamaxed HP, I'm referring to the current HP stat after Dynamaxing. When a Pokémon regresses after Dynamaxing, it will round up its HP stat, or properly speaking, it will take a ceiling of the HP divided by 2. So, for example, suppose I have 357 Dynamaxed HP, which is an odd number. My base HP after regressing from Dynamax will be 179, because 357 divided by 2 is 178.5, which gets rounded back up to 179. Most effects that have to do with HP use the base HP to determine how much damage the Dynamaxed Pokémon should take. For example, Super Citrus Berries, Life Orb, and Sandstorm. However, when it comes to conditions that are met based on a certain amount of HP, then it uses Dynamaxed HP. So, for example, Brine only doubles its base power if the target has 50% or less of its Dynamax HP. As you can see, Snorlax only has 219 out of 470 HP right now. It only has 235 base HP, so you might think that Brine is only going to become 130 base power if the Snorlax is at 235 divided by 2 HP, or 138. However, as you can see from the damage calculation on your screen, Brian actually had 130 base power here. You couldn't have done this much damage otherwise. Or for another example, Glissopod here has 146 base HP, and it doesn't have any Dynamax candies, so it only has 1.5 times HP, since it's just a random Glissopod from my box. However, if I damage Glissopod down to 82 HP, 
Emergency Exit still activates, even though it's only met the 50% condition by Dynamaxed HP. So, how do you know when an effect uses base HP and when it uses Dynamaxed HP? Generally speaking, if you can say, if the Pokémon has a certain percentage of HP, do this, then the effect will be based on Dynamaxed HP. Otherwise, it'll be based on base HP. Three bizarre examples of Dynamaxed HP interactions come in the form of Endeavor, Pain Split, and Super Fang. Endeavor works like this. First, convert the Dynamax Pokémon's HP back to base HP. If there's a decimal, you round up, just like you would at the end of Dynamax. Next, do your normal Endeavor comparison. Figure out the difference between their current base HP and yours. Finally, subtract that value from the Pokémon's Dynamax HP. Let's see an example of this. My 110 HP Wishy Washy uses Endeavor onto a Sandaconda with 294 Dynamax HP. So, first, we convert 294 Dynamax HP back to 147 base HP. Simple enough. Next, we do 147 minus the 110 from Wishy Washy's HP. That's 37. Finally, we take that 294 Dynamax HP and subtract that 37. So 294 minus 37 equals 257, and that's exactly how much HP Sandaconda is left at after this interaction. Now suppose we use Endeavor again. 257 Dynamax HP divided by 2 equals 128.5, which rounds back up to 129. 129 base HP minus 110 HP again equals 19. Finally, 257 Dynamax HP minus 19 HP equals 238 HP, which is exactly the amount of HP Sandaconda ends up at. Super Fang follows a similar set of steps. First, convert Dynamaxed HP back to base HP. This will be rounding up like normal. Then take that base HP, divide it by 2, and floor the result. That is, round down. That's the damage Super Fang will do. Finally, subtract that damage from Dynamaxed HP. To give an example, Snorlax here has 470 Dynamaxed HP. First, that gets converted back to base HP. 470 divided by 2 is 235. Next, take 235, divide that by 2 for Super Fang, and floor the result. That will give us 117.5, which rounds down to 117. Finally, subtract 117 from 470, and we get 353 damage. And that's exactly how much Super Fang does in this case. Pain Split is probably the most complicated of the bunch, but it's not too bad if you understand how Super Fang and Endeavor work already. First, again, convert the Dynamaxed HP to base HP. Next, add this HP to the amount of HP that the Pain Split user currently has. Divide this result by 2 and floor it. That is, round down. Compare the difference of HP between the base HP and the HP we arrived at after this pain split calculation. Finally, add or subtract that difference from the Dynamax HP. So for example, let's take our same Snorlax from before and combine it with a pain split Gorgeist that has 114 current HP. Converting Dynamax HP to base HP, we take 470 divided by 2 and get 235. Next, we add 235 plus 114 together. Next, Divide that by 2 and floor the result. 174 is the HP Snorlax would have been set to in base HP. 235 minus 174 equals 61 HP. So 61 is then subtracted from Snorlax's total 470 Dynamax HP, leaving it at 409 out of 470 HP total. But let's get away from HP mechanics now and talk about some things that Dynamax Pokémon can't do. First, if a Pokémon has a substitute in Dynamaxes, it loses that substitute immediately. You can't use a substitute as an extra bodyguard for a Dynamax Pokémon. It'll just disappear instantly. A Pokémon cannot Dynamax if it can only use Struggle. For example, suppose I am holding a Choice Scarf, and my attack that I'm locked into gets disabled. As you can see here, I am completely unable to Dynamax in this situation because the game doesn't let me choose Struggle. If I select Fight, it just moves on to the next Pokémon. So even though Max moves can get around the Disable restriction, I can't Dynamax to get to that point in the first place. 
In a related way, if you are Dynamaxed and have to use Struggle, which can only happen because you ran out of PP, then you do use Struggle. You don't use Max Strike based on Struggle or anything like that. A Pokémon with Transform, which in VGC is only Ditto, can transform into a Dynamax Pokémon, but it only copies the base form, not the Dynamax itself. So it's not like previous generations, where you could have multiple Mega Pokémon on one side of the field with Transform shenanigans. You can still Dynamax Ditto, however, and it will Dynamax normally. One important caveat, though, is that Ditto cannot Gigantamax in any way. For example, if my Ditto copied my Gigantamax Charizard here, you can see that although Charizard can G-Max Wildfire if it chooses, Ditto only gets to use Max Flare. Dynamaxing a Pokémon also does not reset things like typing or raw stat changes like a more proper form change would. For example, suppose I use Soak and Speed Swap into Aegislash's King Shield here, turning it into a fast water type. As soon as Aegislash changes forms, it immediately loses both that speed and that typing. As you can see, my Frotom's Thunderbolt is not super effective on this Aegislash. In addition, next turn, I am able to move before H slash no problem, because H slash lost the speed that Rabombi had given it on a previous turn. That's all to say that Dynamaxing doesn't do this. For example, if I use Soak on Snorlax here, then Gigantamax it, Thunderbolt is still super effective on Snorlax, because Dynamaxing doesn't reset things like typing or raw stats in the same way a normal form change does. Typically, we like to say that Dynamaxed Pokémon regress back to their base state after three turns. However, properly speaking, they don't actually regress until before the start of the fourth turn. The main difference is that if a Pokémon gets KO'd on the final turn of Dynamaxing, the Pokémon won't return back to normal until after new Pokémon have been sent out to replace the fainted slots. Something like Sandstorm will resolve before you switch in the next thing, but Dynamax waits it out. This difference doesn't really affect anything, but it does mean you have to pay attention to how many turns your opponent has been Dynamaxed when you're sending out your Pokémon. It might be helpful to take notes on the number of turns your opponent has been Dynamaxed during a game, so this won't mess you up. Finally, let's look at some special cases of Dynamaxing. First, as you'll be familiar with if you've used my Battle Tower BP Grinding rental team, Zacian, Zamazenta, and Eternatus all cannot Dynamax at all. A Ditto transformed into any of these three Pokémon won't be able to get around this, and it can't Dynamax either. When Shedinja Dynamaxes, even if it has 10 Dynamax candies, it still only has 1 HP. This makes Shedinja the only Pokémon where you don't have to worry about having used Dynamax candies on it. Finally, if Cramorant is in its gulping form, which means it either has the fish or Pikachu in its mouth, Dynamax and Cramorant will return it back to normal without the fish or Pikachu. This does count as a form change for the purposes of typing or raw stats updates like I mentioned before. And as far as I know, Cramorant is the only Pokémon to behave like this with form changes and Dynamax. Now that we've addressed mechanics related to Dynamaxing itself, we can talk about max moves. To start off, max moves do follow a scale for their BP based on what their max move is, but it's a pretty convoluted chart with a lot of exceptions. Credit to Sadistic Mystic for sharing this list. You can find a comparable list on Bubblepedia if you want to look up the max move base power for a particular attack. You'll notice here that there are two separate charts, one on the left, which is more general, and one on the right, which is for fighting and poison type max moves. These max moves have less BP inherently because they grant plus one attack and plus one special attack to you and your allies after being used. As a result, something like Close Combat, which is normally 120 base power, will only be 95 base power as a max move, something to keep in mind. Also of note is that multi-attack is considered to be in the fighting and poison type move list no matter what type it actually is, and as a result is only 95 base power. Max moves exhibit similar properties to Z moves from the previous generation. To start off, a max move has sure hit accuracy, meaning it will hit the opponent even if they have plus 6 evasion 
and you have minus six accuracy for certain. Of course, you can't hit a Pokemon in the middle of a move like Fly or Phantom Force unless you also had something like No Guard. Max moves will only deal one-fourth of its normal damage if they land into a Protect, limiting the amount of damage that a Max move can do by a significant margin. In addition to Dynamax itself being immune to Encore, if you were Encored before Dynamaxing, you can completely ignore its effects. A similar principle applies to Disable, which we've already looked at. However, you can Encore a Pokémon the turn immediately after it has Dynamaxed and lock it into whatever base move the Dynamax attack was based on. For example, I'm able to Encore this Snorlax here into Body Slam, because on the previous turn, Snorlax was using G-Max Replenish based on Body Slam. So far as I know, this only applies for Encore. Both Disable and Instruct will just say, but it failed, if you use them on a Dynamax Pokémon the turn after Dynamax is over. Imprison will not stop the usage of max moves. For example, if the opposing Musharna with Imprison and Moonblast imprisons my Sylveon out of Moonblast, I am able to Dynamax and use Max Starfall based on Moonblast with no problems. If the opposing Musharna was Dynamaxed itself, then I still can't use its sealed base moves. So even though the opposing Musharna used Imprison, then Dynamaxed, I still can't use Moonblast. However, that means I'm not stopped from using Max Starfall, so I can use Max Starfall freely, even though the opponent has imprisoned my base moves. It is not possible to use Max moves on an ally. You must always attack the opponent when using a Max move, which is not especially important for your average game of VGC, but it is not very helpful when testing mechanics interactions and makes me very sad. If you use Copycat and the last used move on the field was a Max move, Copycat will use the corresponding base move that Max Move was based on. The classic example that I've seen floating around on Twitter is to use Max Guard based on Trick Room, then use Copycat to set Trick Room at plus zero priority while protecting the real Trick Room Center, adding another tool to the bag of tricks for getting Trick Room set up. Speaking of Max Guard, all status moves that a Dynamax Pokemon has will automatically get converted to this move which basically behaves like a Super Protect. Max Guard blocks all the damage from opposing Max moves, meaning you don't even take the quarter damage like from regular Protect. It even blocks a number of effects that normally bypass Protect. Of notable importance is Phantom Force, which will neither do damage nor lift the effect of Max Guard for an ally. Faint will do damage, but it also won't break Max Guard to allow an ally to follow up. In addition, Block, Flower Shield, Gear Up, Magnetic Flux, Psych Up, Tea Time, and Transform are all stopped by Max Guard when they normally go through Protect just fine. The really interesting one here to me is that Block is stopped by Max Guard, but Mean Look, which is otherwise equivalent, isn't stopped by Max Guard and can still trap its target. Max Guard cannot be used if the user is taunted. This is unlike previous generations where you could use a Z status move through Taunt. In a related way, Assault Vest also prevents the usage of Max Guard. It's not like choice items where you can get around the restriction, since the special defense boost from Assault Vest still applies even while Dynamaxed. One important thing to keep in mind is that Max Guard and Protect still run on the same double Protect counter. That means using Protect into Max Guard, or two Max Guards in a row, or a Max Guard then a Protect, has a chance to fail, just like using double Protect has a chance to fail. The max moves all have different effects that apply after you've dealt damage to your opponent. You can see a chart of these max move effects on your screen right now. There are basically four categories to max moves, raising ally stats, lowering opponent stats, setting weather, and setting terrain. There are a few nuances regarding certain type-changing moves and abilities that's worth mentioning, though. For example, 
So Volley's max move based on multi-attack will always look like max strike in the move selection screen, but actually using the attack will change its typing to reflect whatever memory Sylvie is currently holding. Remember, max multi-attack will always be 95 base power, no matter which memory it holds. In a similar way, using a max normal move on a pixelate Pokémon like Sylveon will transform the max move into max starfall and set misty terrain. Notably, however, it will not get the 1.3 times bonus base power in doing so. The G max moves have unique additional effects that differentiate them from regular max moves. Since VGC currently only allows 10 different Gigantamax Pokémon, I will only be covering those in this video. But whenever more Gigantamax Pokémon are allowed in VGC, I will cover the mechanics of their effects then when they are released. Gigantamax Charizard can use G Max Wildfire, based on any fire type move, to deal 1 6 damage to the opponent's side of the field for 4 turns. Fire type Pokémon are immune to this extra damage of G Max Wildfire. The effect persists even when Charizard switches out or gets KO'd. Gigantamax Butterfree can use G Max Befuddle, based on any bug type move, to randomly inflict sleep paralysis, or poison to both opponents. You can have two different statuses inflicted. For example, one Pokémon could be paralyzed, and the other could be poisoned. If a Pokémon has a natural immunity to a status, it won't be affected by that particular instance of whatever G-Max Befuddle happens to pick. For example, a Toxitricity can't ever be poisoned or paralyzed, so if G-Max Befuddle doesn't put Toxitricity to sleep, it has effectively no side effect. Notably, abilities like Sweet Veil can still passively be in effect to prevent sleep if G-Max Befuddle happens to pick that from its three random choices. As you can see here, Alcremi was not put to sleep from G-Max Befuddle, and that's because Sweet Veil was working in the background to protect it. Gigantamax Pikachu can use G-Max Volt Crash, based on any electric type move, to paralyze both opponents. Like G-Max Befuddle, it respects the natural immunity of electric types to paralysis, but Pikachu can still paralyze an ally ground type if it gets the opportunity. Gigantamax Eevee can use G-Max Cuddle, based on any normal type move, to inflict the Attract Infatuation Ball tile on both opponents. However, this only works if the opponent is of an opposite gender, as just like Attract works normally, you can only infatuate opponents of the opposite gender to Eevee. Gigantamax Meowth can use G-Max Gold Rush, based on any normal type move, to confuse both opponents. This G-Max move is typically much more commonly seen in the main story to farm money, as using it three times in a game with an amulet coin can allow players to farm $99,999 from payday money per match. Gigantamax Norlax can use G-Max Replenish based on any normal type move to have a 50% chance to restore both Snorlax and its allies' berries. It's either all or nothing with G-Max Replenish. You can't have Snorlax get its berry back and not its ally, for example. If a berry was destroyed via something like knockoff, though, just like with Recycle, you can't restore it back with G-Max Replenish. However, it will still restore allies' berries. Gigantamax Corviknight can use G-Max Wind Rage, based on any flying type move, to apply a defog effect that removes entry hazards and terrains off the field for both players, as well as removes screens like Reflect, Light Screen, or Aurora Veil from the opponent's side of the field. Gigantamax Dreadnought can use G-Max Stone Surge, based on any water type move, to set up Stealth Rock on the opposing side of the field. Gigantamax Sandaconda can use G-Max Sand Blast, based on any ground type move, to set the Sand Tomb effect on both opponents for either 4 or 5 turns. 7 turns if Sandaconda is holding a Grip Claw. This effect damages the opponents for 1 8 of their HP each turn and traps them in, preventing them from switching out unless they have a move like U-Turn or our ghost type Even if Sandaconda faints or switches out, the Sand Tomb effect still applies to both of the opponent's Pokémon, making it a difficult field condition to remove.
Gigantamax Centiscorch can use G Max Centiferno, based on a fire type move, to do the exact same thing I just described Sandicon to be able to do, but with Fire Spin. Just watch the last bit again, but replacing Sandicon to Centiscorch, and it will be the exact same thing. The side effects of G Max moves, in addition to the side effects of regular Max moves, are not considered to be secondary effects for the purposes of things like Sheer Force, Shield Dust, or Serene Grace. So, for example, a Sheer Force Max Strike from this girder will still lower the opponent's speed and not get a boosted base power for it. In a similar way, if you somehow manage to get Serene Grace onto Snorlax, it'll still only be a 50% chance to activate its berry restoring effect. As you can see here, Snorlax failed to restore its berry that it had eaten before. And that's all the mechanics I know about related to Dynamaxing. I'm sure even more nuances will be discovered as researchers continue to test different interactions and players continue to play VGC games at in-person events. If you want to follow along on Battle Mechanics research progress, I would strongly recommend checking out the Smogon Battle Mechanics research thread, which is updated regularly by players and researchers from around the world who are interested in contributing to a global pool of information that the community can take advantage of. Special thanks to Anubis, Crystal Ninetales, and Bright Size for helping me record the footage for this video, and to you for watching today's video. If you learned something new, or if you have a specific question about Dynamax interactions that I didn't cover, leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, have a good one.